and you would have seen that this was not fit for prime time. This is absolute bullshit. Don't you dare walk in here with ear pods. I will kill you. <laughs> Actually, before I end the stream, I should probably read this. Oh, this is going to make me angry. Is this going to make me angry? All right. Apple confirms MacBook Pro thermal throttling. Software fix coming today. How many gates can one laptop have? For a week, we've been seeing reports that this newly released MacBook Pros run hot, which all kicked off after this video by Dave Lee. They run so hot, in fact, that the very fancy 8th gen Intel Core processors inside them were throttled down to below their base speed. Apple has acknowledged that thermal throttling is a real issue caused by a software bug, and it's issuing a software update today that's designed to address it. The company also apologized, writing, We apologize to any customer who has experienced less than optimal performance on their new systems. Apple claims that it discovered the issue after further testing in the wake of Lee's video, because they didn't test these machines rendering a video before Dave Lee's video. Because after putting this machine together, they couldn't try it one time with the most popular program that people use on these devices. Adobe Premiere Final Cut Pro editing and rendering video. Like, you didn't think to do this until after people reviewed it. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god. And this is the thing. This is how you know Apple fucked up. Right here where it says, the company apologized writing, we apologize to any customer who has experienced less than optimal performance in their new systems. They didn't pull their usual bullshit. Apple's usual crap goes something like this. Apple has determined that some iPhone 6 devices may exhibit display flickering. Not most of them often exhibit over the GPU. Apple has determined that a small percentage of 2011 MacBook Pros may exhibit distorted video. This is how you know that they know that not only did they fuck up, but that they know they fucked up. Because they're not saying, a small percentage of people have experienced throttling or we apologize to the small amount of customers who may have experienced. No, they're saying we apologize to any customer who has experienced less than optimal performance and they're not prefacing it. They're not trying to sweeten it up. They're not trying to like kind of gaslight you into thinking that if it happened to you, you're part of that, that 1%. It's like that 1% of 1%. It's like nothing. Apple claims that it discovered the issue after further testing in the wake of Lee's video, which showed results that Apple hasn't seen in its own testing. In a call with The Verge, representatives said that the throttling was only exhibited under fairly specific, highly intense workloads, which is why the company didn't catch the bug before release. In a call with The Verge, representatives said that the throttling was only exhibited under fairly specific workloads. What is fairly specific about rendering a video in Adobe Premiere? That's what these products do. The whole point of buying an Apple product and paying that premium for many people is that they're more stable for video and audio production. I'm not gonna debate the issue with people, you know, we can do that later. For many people, they are more stable than Microsoft platforms for audio and video production. The entire point of buying these devices is that. Go into any studio, go into Avatar Studio, go into any big production house, they're using mostly Apple products for that reason. Don't you say fairly specific, high intense workloads, which is like, because see, they're trying to sneak that in there, right? They're trying to say, like, it's like it's 1% of the 1%, it's go, who could have caught this? Y your entire company was built on making devices for creators. People who create edit video. Edit a fucking video. I mean, here's what you could have done. You could have edited the commercial for the new MacBook Pro on the new MacBook Pro and have seen that it was unfit for release. That's all you had to do is literally make the marketing materials for your new product on your new product. And you would have seen that this was not fit for prime time. This is absolute bullshit. Don't you dare walk in here with ear pods. I will kill you. <laughs> the bug affects every new generation of the MacBook Pro, including both the 13-inch and 15-inch sizes, all of the Intel processor configurations. It does not affect previous generations. There's a missing digital key in the firmware that impacts the thermal management system. Yeah. Here's the company's statement in full. Following extensive performance testing under numerous workloads, we've identified that there is a missing digital key in the firmware that impacts the thermal management system and could drive clock speeds down under thermal heavy loads in the new MacBook Pro. Yes, like a heat pipe or little heat sinks on your VRMs. Yeah, mi missing digital key. How about missing hardware? How about you cool the shit you put inside these computers? Following extensive performance testing under numerous workloads, we've identified that there is a missing digital key in the firmware that Im impacts the thermal management system and could drive clock speeds down under heavy thermal loads in the new MacBook Pro. A bug fix is included in today's macOS High Sierra 10.13.6 supplemental update 
and is recommended. We apologize to any customer who has experienced less than optimal performance on their new systems. Customers can expect the new MacBook 15-inch MacBook Pro to be up to 70% faster and the 15-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar to be up to two times faster as shown in the performance results on our website. Apple declined to provide more detail on what precisely the missing digital key is. Of course they did. But beyond the fact that it's lack impacts the thermal management system. The company is sticking to its stated performance claims in the new machines and will add one more benchmark graph to its official MacBook Pro page on its website to reflect more recent tests. The admission caps off a full week of drama on these new MacBook Pros. Surprisingly enough, thermal throttling is not the main storyline in this drama. That role falls to the keyboard. Apple persists in insisting that the redesign of the keyboard to include a silicone barrier was to make the keyboard quieter. It does so in the face of its own internal documents that state plainly how the new design should help its keyboards be more reliable when crumbs or grit make their way inside. So here's what's happening here. Apple is trying to avoid admitting that the keyboards from 2015 through 2017 were piles of crap. So what they're saying is that when they added this new layer to the keyboard, it was only to make it quieter. The reason they're doing that, and I mentioned this in an earlier video, by the way, is if they admit that they have improved the keyboard to make it more reliable, by doing that, they're admitting that these keyboards are more reliable than the old keyboards. So if these keyboards have normal reliability, that means that the old keyboards have crap reliability, and admitting that three years of your products had crap reliability, well, that's not the type of thing that Apple's willing to do. As for the throttling drama, making sense of the various articles and videos benchmarking these machines has been nothing less of than head spinning. Making sense of all the different results has been a challenge. Here's a couple, though. Jonathan Morrison ran an extensive battery of tests that show the i9 MacBook Pros to run faster than the i7. On the other hand, the founder of Geekbench, cre Geekbench created some custom tests that showed that the top-end i9 processors performed slower. John Poole says results from the custom stress test for the i7 and i9 MacBook Pro on average the i9 is slightly slower than the i7. I'm working on some other tests and some show how the i9 is faster than the i7. For example, in just about every single core test, first or sustain, the i9 is faster than the i7. So if you're using one-sixth of the processor's capability, imagine that. It actually works properly. I'll hopefully have something to share with more detailed tests and more data next week. Good work, John Poole. Now that there's a software fix that puts the so-called missing digital key back in to better manage the temperature of the processors, it looks like everybody will need to run these tests all over again. That's precisely what we're look going to do ahead of our review. We've also reached out to Intel and we'll report back if they comment. Oh. Oh god, it gets worse. <laughs> Leaked Apple service document confirms new MacBook Pro keyboard is designed to fix dust problems. Turns out Apple just didn't want to make the keys quieter. A recent leaked Apple service document obtained by Mac Rumors confirms what many already suspected. The newly introduced silicone membranes discovered by iFixit that are beneath the keycaps in the new MacBook Pro keyboard aren't just there to muffle sound. By the way, I was right. That keyboard is too loud, so take that Gizmodo. A recently leaked Apple service document obtained by Mac Rumors confirms what many already suspected. The newly introduced silicone membranes discovered by iFixit that are beneath the keycaps in the new MacBook Pro keyboard aren't just there to muffle sound. They're also there as a protective layer to block dust and debris from interfering with the sensitive butterfly mechanism that has proved so problematic for some users. When Apple announced its latest MacBook Pro updates last week, one of the more notable changes to the hardware was a third generation version of the much maligned butterfly keyboard. But Apple insisted that the only real difference was that the updated models were quieter. Thanks to iFixit, we know that the reduced noise from the keyboards is due to the addition of a ru rubber membrane under each key. The repair document is the first direct confirmation we've had from Apple that the membrane is specifically designed to protect the new keyboard from encountering the same problems as its predecessors. Thanks to iFixit, we know that the reduced noise from the keyboards is due to the addition of a rubber membrane under each key. The repair document is the first direct confirmation we've had from Apple that the membrane is specifically designed to protect the new keyboard from encountering the same problem as its predecessors. Per the document, keyboard and keycaps. The keyboard is a membrane under the keycaps to prevent debris from entering the butterfly mechanism. The procedure for the space bar replacement has also changed from the previous model. Repair documentation and service videos will be available when keycap parts begin shipping. Apple recently acknowledged that some of the users of the 2016 and 2017 MacBook and MacBook Pro laptops with earlier versions of the butterfly switches were experiencing issues with their keyboards and it offered a four-year extended warranty problem to deal with any issues. Interestingly, the new 2018 models are included in the warranty offer, and Apple won't be using third-generation keyboard parts to repair problems on older models. Does anybody believe this? Tell me somebody actually believes this shit. So they created a keyboard that doesn't work properly. They don't admit it. 
they release a warranty program for that keyboard that they won't admit didn't work properly just, you know, just because they like you like that. Just because they want to give out free shit because they're nice. Then they make a new keyboard that's supposed to be, that not be better than the old keyboard, but they just changed it because. And then after they do that, they don't use that new keyboard on the old one because then they'd have to admit that there was something wrong with the original key. Like, why? Just tell the truth. Just say you fucked up. It's not that hard. We have to do it at least once here every single day. Just do it. Just tell the truth. The truth is the truth. All you can do is live with it, as Dream Theater said on their 2007 album. That's a shame, since the ever-increasing evidence seems to point at the, uh, to the fact that Apple has managed to solve the keyboard problems in a more substantial way in the newer models. The only question that remains is why won't Apple just acknowledge that there was a problem that it fixed? The company is potentially facing class action lawsuits over the keyboard trouble, so that might at least partially explain the silence. And this is, this is what gets me when people say, ever since Tim Cook took over Apple, they've made crappy products. Ever since Tim, you know, when Steve Jobs was there, there was this, the sun would rise and it would never set. And, you know, there were just bunny rabbits jumping around everywhere and the world was a peaceful place. And no. This is the same dude that told you that when you had bad service on your phone, it was because you were holding it wrong. This level of arrogance is something that has followed Apple for 30 years. It is a core component of their company culture. They will never admit when they fucked up.